Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, namaste. Um, everything is different right now because I am currently in Asheville, North Carolina doing my 200 hour yoga teacher training. So that also means that all of my reading for March is going to be like super super different so um i probably won't include like any of the required reading from the course it'll probably just be all of the books that i finish up with um once i actually get back to texas so yeah let's get into it so i am i closed out my safari oh no but um so this is my february wrap up of what all i read and i have I had a really good reading month for February. I really enjoyed almost all of the books that I read. There was only one that I was like, I'm upset that I read this. Um, yeah, but we'll go over that. Let me click on my books. I've got my Goodreads up on my laptop right here. Water instead of coffee today because yoga. All right, and again, since I'm not at home, I don't have the books with me, and I checked most, all of these. Yeah, all of these I actually got from the library. So, I don't own any of these books, so I'm sorry, but um, I'll list them down below, since I won't have holding a book, and I'm also not going to go back through and put it up on the top left of the screen. I know that I should, but I'm not going to. Alright, so the first book that I read in February was Scythe. Um, I'm in a twisty chair. I'll stop twisting. And uh, that's by Neil Schusterman. That is the first book in the Scythe trilogy I think he's going to do. And I rated this one a 4 out of 5. So as far as dystopian, teen, young adult, adventure, fantasy type books go, this one was pretty damn good. I liked the world that they built around it and um, the way that he really went into detail about the scythedom. Like I really felt as though I understood what all that was about by the end of the book. I thought I was going to get to see a little bit more of the training, like the details of the training, but whatever. Um, so if you haven't heard of this book, basically it is set in the future, but not so distant future. We have got a cure for everything to include death. However, population control is bitch and somebody's got to do it. So they have these people that are called scythes who have like a quota for how many different types of people and they just they just kind of got to vary it. Like there is actual a science and mathematics to the way that they're supposed to glean, not kill. Um, I talked about this book a little bit more in a previous video, but anyways, we get these two teenagers who are chosen to become scythe apprentices and we go through the journey with them and there are of course some like evil scythes and they've got to deal with that. There's, I liked the conflict in the book. I liked that the male and female uh, protagonists, there wasn't like this huge love thingy between them like we saw in Hunger Games. Um, even though I, I don't, <sighs> yeah. There was no forced romance. Let me put it that way. I'm not trying to spoil anything for anyone. There was no forced romance whatsoever. I thought it was very well done. The only reason why I gave it a 4 out of 5 is because I'm not the demographic that this book was supposed to go to. So it was definitely young adult. Um, however, I think that it is a very enjoyable read for someone who does enjoy more adult type books and adult fantasy. I do think that the world was very interesting and in the introduction of the book he does make mention of a movie project in the works so I will probably pick up Thunderhead from the library and read that one as well. So now we go to Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Oh my gosh this book was amazing. I rated it 
five out of five stars, like if I could rate it a million out of a million stars, I would do that too. It was so good. So at the very beginning of the book, very beginning, a character is dead and you basically see what this family goes through in the midst of this character's death. Um, how the children's half Asian, half um, Caucasian genes, they're half Asian, half Caucasian because the the patri the the father is um, Asian and the mother is white. And you see the struggle that the kids go through. I think this was like in the 70s or 80s, I think 70s. And I think that is, you know, I, I like to think that kids wouldn't be as mean nowadays, but my little sister is mixed and I remember her going through some of this stuff whenever she was a lot younger with kids who hear their parents say things and don't think about it and don't realize that they can't say the same things in public or that they shouldn't say them at all. That it's just straight up wrong. Um, and the idea of just being different, which I think is relatable to people outside of, you know, that, that niche area of half Asian, half white, um, even though, you know, people who are mixed are starting to become more of a majority, which is awesome because they're beautiful. But anyways, um, so everyone's beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm tired from yoga. But anyways, this book was just amazing. Like when I was done with it, I seriously just had to sit there for a moment and it wasn't that I was sad. I was kind of sad. I was kind of depressed. Um, thankfully my cat Clive jumped up into my lap and just like put his paw out to me and I, pet, I, I stroked his paw. But like it made me think so much. And there's not a lot of action in the book. It's definitely more of character development and just kind of not a who done it, but a why done it, I guess. So going more to the motive and uh, beautiful story. Beautiful. Loved it. I'm buying everything that she that she writes. For sure. I am a Celestine fan for life now. All right, so I'm going to speed this up because we're already close to eight minutes, but the next book is A Darker Shade of Magic. I rated this one a three out of five. <sighs> I don't know. I don't think that I've found like my fantasy series yet, and I really, really want to like fantasy, and to be honest, I can't totally remember what was wrong with A Darker Shade of Magic. I don't know, it just, it didn't grip me as much as I wanted it to. Maybe it had been hyped up too much. So basically, there, there are these magical people. There's four Londons. You got Red London, White London, Black London, and Grey London. So Grey is ours. Red London is where, like, magic is abundant. Um, White London is kind of like where magic has gone kind of to the evil side. Like, it's power-hungry people now. And Black London let magic just overwhelm it um and yeah so you have people certain magicians that can go to these different universes I don't know I just I expected for it for more and this isn't a young adult fantasy either I know that Victoria Schwab does um both young adult and adult I just it wasn't intended to be young adult, but I think that it was. Um, I thought it was very, very well written. And again, I thought it was enjoyable. And I actually liked the the main female character. I know a lot of people, like, she's one of those that you either love or hate. I just, I just liked her. Um, you know, she was fine. Oops, got a message. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I just rated it a 3 out of 5. It was okay. Like, I'll probably read the, the second book. But, eh. Alright, so the next one that I read is called Valentine Murder. And, of course, February. So I had to read some Valentine's Day stuff. So I decided to read Valentine Murder. It was a cozy mystery about a, um, a lady 
who writes for a local newspaper and is kind of like a stay-at-home mom but not and this librarian gets killed and we got to figure out who done it and again I thought it was interesting it was slightly it was pretty entertaining um but I didn't feel as though I was the demographic again. Like there were definitely some uh, comedic moments in the book, or at least I knew that they were supposed to be funny, but or supposed to be endearing, like the way that she interacts with her kids or her husband. And I was just kind of like, oh, okay. Like I can't relate, but I, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. But again, it was enjoyable. Eh. Um, and that one, I'm doing terrible at summing up these books, I'm sorry. So, Valentine Murder by Leslie Meyer. It was okay. It was okay. Probably won't pick up another one of hers, but I do want to read more Cozy Mysteries. I recently just bought a couple that I saw on sale, so I'm going to try again. Alright, so the next book, y'all, I read The Handmaid's Tale, finally amazing. I don't think I did a full review on this one. Oh, Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Five stars. Um, I did not do a full review on this one. I did a full review on another one. Anyways, so if you don't know what The Handmaid's Tale is about, um, a lot of people think that this one is a dystopian future type thing. Um, kind of. Kind of. It's basically like there's this war going on and we get to see it from one perspective that like hardly ever gets told and and that's through the perspective of the handmaid which you would think would be kind of like a servant and she is a little bit but not really and they make sure to tell to distinguish that difference. And the thing that I like about this book is that you know they, they show the idea of what the handmaid is supposed to be, like she's supposed to be, ah, she's the one who can give birth and have kids and whatnot. So the family should take her with loving arms and all the women should be like super supportive to everyone because they're just a community trying to make things work. But nah, things get dramatic, like quick. And oh, of course it's a feminist book too. I just, I don't want to talk about it too much. If you, it, I, I'm watching the Hulu series as well. Not right now, obviously. We don't even have a TV. Um, I saw the first episode. What I like about the Hulu series is I knew that there was going to be some different stuff because in the book, we literally only see the perspective of the handmaid and other handmaids that give her like teensy bits of information. So we have an idea of the outside world and the war that is going on. But uh, we don't get to see a lot of it. So what I was hoping from the Hulu series is that we do get to see some more of this. Because I would like a little bit more information. Um, but I understand why we didn't get that in the book. And I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, I keep saying um a lot. I'm sorry. Anyways, amazing, amazing book. If you haven't read it yet, what I will say is that take your time getting into it. It takes a while to get used to the way that Margaret Atwood writes this book. It's kind of all over the place. Um, we're jumping back and forth a lot. It's a lot to keep up with at first. But once you're like four chapters into it, it starts to make sense. And you're able to actually grasp on to what she's writing and the story that she's telling. So hang in there. Take it slow at first, especially if you're a fast reader like I am. Like, I took it one chapter at a time. Just really slow down and tuned in on the language because it's different. So hang in there. All right. The next book that I read, I'm not even going to spend a lot of time on because we're almost at 15 minutes. And it wasn't that good. Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman was not good, y'all. So I gave it two stars. Um, I messed up. I've seen the movie. Duh. And I thought it was going to be a lot like the movie. It was kind of like the movie, but not as good. So I loved the relationship. So we got three different generations of women. Two sisters, two sisters, and then two sisters. Yeah. And I thought that each one was very unique. 
very unique. The only reason why this book got two stars is because of the character development, which is my main pull. The only reason why I was able to finish this book and the uh, relationship between all six of those women. We get to see the relationship between each one, all sorts of different combinations of them. And I thought it was beautiful. The problems <laughs> with this book, I do not need to be told however many times throughout the story. It seemed like every other page I had to be told how beautiful these women are, how gray their eyes are, how men just stupefy whenever they come into their presence. Like, it got really annoying after a while. So freaking annoying. And of course, you know, they're treated terribly as children. Um, the two main sisters that we're following in the book, it, it, whenever they're younger. But I mean, then you know, they become teenagers and they're beautiful as all get out and they're still having their life problems, which are relatable. But at the end of the, the day, they're just, they're just drop down gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous. You know, like, I just got tired of hearing it and I thought that the plot was so weak. I, I mean, the way that they built the plot in the storyline in the movie was better than the book. I would rather watch the movie than read the book for practical magic. That's saying something. All right, so the last book that I read in February was Red Clocks, and I did do a full spoiler-free review on this one before I left to come here. So please go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, but I rated this one a four out of five and I wanted to read Handmaid's Tale before Red Clocks because a lot of people try to compare the two because they're dystopian and feminist and deal with red. So, um, it was, I liked the book. I did like the book. I think it has, should be separated from Handmaid's Tale completely. But again, I go into more detail on that in my spoiler free review, link at the bottom. And this video is long enough as it is. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna wrap it up there. And I will have a, hopefully I'll have another video for you next week. We'll see, like I said, I'm doing this yoga teacher training and it's taking up every day and every night. And I have a ton of homework that I need to get to now. So I'm gonna do that after I upload this video. But thank you so much for watching. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe even. And if you have any questions about the yoga teacher training thing, just leave them down below or message me and I will try to get to those as soon as the schedule allows. But I am still checking the comments almost every day during my lunch. So I hope you all have a great one. Thank you, bye.